The very concept of the randomly generated genre of gaming, roguelikes, is something still a bit fresh or new to me, something that was created not too long ago. The fun, challenging nature, definite reset of progress, randomly generated environments, sweaty boss battles, spelunking experience, and replayability potential really make you feel like a special level gamer. Hey game heads, it's PDoc, and today on the channel, we are going to take a look at 10 amazing offline roguelikes for those special grade gamers. Speaking of a special grade, many of my viewers aren't yet special, about 90% of you guys aren't, so do both of us a favor and hit that now white subscribe button. Let's enter the video, shall we? We won't really be talking about roguelikes if dungeons or labyrinths weren't involved, cause that's where the whole randomly generated labyrinth really comes. Encompassing that concept is, Endless Wanderer, an action pixel dungeon crawler. You enter vast stage-like labyrinths, fighting mobs, exploring areas, and getting perks in the process, you know, all the usual stuff. The combat is one I find to be the main interest, it's fluid, visually complex yet easy in controls, a mechanic made possible because you can stack up perks and abilities found during each run, and with good use of this, you can create some flashy-looking swordplay tailored to your imagination. Aside from that, it's as roguelike as you can get, so it's a no-brainer to check it out, except you don't have brains, cause it's free and not space demanding. Next up is Warm Snow. To be honest, I did cover this game quite a few months back, and I did promise that I was going to test it out, cause, just take a look at it, it looks amazing. It's an action dark fantasy roguelike set in ancient China. Your job as a warrior is to save the kingdom after the aftermath of a disaster termed warm snow that turns denizens into monsters. The gameplay looks amazing, it's a hack and slash, semi-open world, randomly generated action game with epic looking boss fights, cool abilities ranging from flying swords to rowing, to flame talismans, and everything in between. Again, the graphics are amazing, colorful, cryptic, and beautiful, and the game just looks like something that will capture you for hours, and it also has a storyline that is absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's follow up with Juicy Realm. At first glance, you will notice fun-looking, colorful, and beautiful animated graphics. The premise is equally as cute and Ghibli-like, where you have to battle sentient fruits that want to take over the world. An action, roguelike, labyrinth diver, which I've played and very much enjoyed doing so, you enter these fruit kingdoms, clearing mobs, getting weapons, and defeating challenging bosses to continue to the next stage. The thing I enjoyed most about it is that each environment or each level, kind of like Skourgebranger, is different, bringing new enemy types, different biomes, and environmental hazards. The combat is also well thought out, reminding of a popular PC indie title of the same genre, can't seem to remember the name, yeah, it is a beautiful game and it's gonna be one of those roguelikes you are going to be stuck playing for hours. It's paid and available on your app stores. We cannot really talk about roguelikes without really talking about one of the most popular genres being shoot em all. And one very good example of this interesting, chaotic genre is Brotado, a game where you play as a potato trying to survive randomly generated spawns of endless enemies while getting overpowered in the process. The genre has a way of giving you a sense of godlikeness that you start from a normal person with just a single weapon and before you know it, you are clearing entire grid maps of enemies. Brotado does a very good job having a plethora of weapons, dozens of enemy types, and a satisfying feeling of growth and power. If you are into this type of genre, you should definitely try it out. It's fun, even though the graphics aren't that amazing, the combat is. And that's really what good, true gamers look for. The game is free, I believe, and is available on your app store. I'm not good at explaining card-style games. The genre is a bit complex for me to give good insight on it and that brings us to the next game on our list, Cult Simulator. To be honest, I have seen this game multiple times but didn't really think of diving into it or checking it out so while making this list, I decided to check it out and discovered that it had really good reviews. They say it's a twist in the card building genre, mixing crafting mechanics into the game. You play as a seeker after the unholy mistress, Lovecraftian style, in a 1920s themed setting of hidden gods and secret histories. You become a scholar of unseen art, craft tools, and summon spirits, indoctrinate innocence, and seize your place as the herald of a new age. Basically, you are just trying to create a new powerful cult. 
infamously known not to be easy, really encapsulating that die, learn, repeat nature of roguelike with decision-making option to spice things up. Personally, I don't play card games that much but my gaming senses tell me it's a good game. It's paid now at an 80% discount. Okay, Indies Lies is next up. A card builder, hero collector, action turn-based strategy game. It does sound a lot like Slay the Spire, since they both have similar premises. But Indies Lies has kind of a more close relationship to me because I did talk about it when I was still beginning the channel. Indie Slice is a good roguelike. I didn't find it a masterpiece while playing. But I did find it interesting enough to enjoy my time with it. You dive into different adventures which have different paths, gathering heroes, building decks, collecting, and upgrading talents, making influential decisions and battling enemies. I found the gameplay super interesting. You can stack up damage depending on how you choose your teammates. I never really played the game that much to really dive into the mechanics. But I can say one thing, it is a very good game. Next up is Wizard of Legend. Now this one is a banger. It looks amazing, just the trailer has a way of grabbing you in. In a true sense of the roguelite genre, it brings action that's probably spellbinding. You play as an upcoming wizard braving the gauntlet of the chaos trials, in other to earn the title of Wizard of Legend. Now the very thing that makes roguelikes a top enjoyable genre is the combat and the game does an amazing job, really encapsulating it. Staying true to the whole wizard thing, there are many, and I mean many spells that are combinable, allowing you to create devastating, creative, and unique spells, like a true wizard would. I personally enjoy this, a lot. As wizard's combat potential isn't really explored well in most games. The boss battles are great, the graphics also look amazing, it may be pixelated but that doesn't take away from its beauty. Everything about the game screams premium, which it is, cause it is paid in 383 megabytes. Fury Unleashed is an underrated game that I'm not sure why it isn't talked about much. The game follows the story of an ever-changing comic book that gets more dangerous the more perfectly you play the game. Kind of like a contrast but yeah. Seems like a fun concept. You are literally a sentient character within a comic book trying to find out why your creator is having a creativity crisis. And get it, the greatest resource in the game is the ink, you know, as it's a comic book. The combat looks magnetizing. An action platformer shoot them all that looks really good with comic style graphics. The action sequences look straight out of a comic book with platforming that allows you to dodge, evade enemies, shoot them down, and also battle big bosses. Platformer games have a good way of mixing shooting elements and the roguelike ability really twists things as each runtime won't technically be new. So Fury Unleashed looks like a very well-made game and I'm still quite shocked it doesn't get that much love. So you should check it out. It's paid and it's 700 plus megabytes in size. Okay, next up is Tesla Force, a chaotic looking roguelike shooter that sees you playing as the famous scientists Tesla, Marie Curie, and Lovecraft, who are fighting swarms and swarms of eldritch horror. I think I have played this game before, it's still a bit fuzzy in my imagination or in my memory, but I do think it looks amazing. Chaotic, but amazing. The graphics look okay, in a polygon-style nature that was made by the same company that made Undead Horde. It boasts of unlimited number of worlds, that means each world you fight in, is completely different from the next, if you can survive the swarms and move from level to level, you are going to meet something new. The combat is chaotic, since it's a one versus many shoot them all game. You fight in hordes of enemies as you gain power-ups and get stronger, clearing challenges to really go on to the next level. But when you die, everything kind of resets. It's a good-looking roguelike that is paid and available on both Android and iOS. I kind of saved the very best for last, Scourgebringer. This amazing title came like a surge in 2022 and even topped my ranking for the best game back then. That's just how good the game is, even though it is an auto-battler, you attack automatically when you are close enough, it still has a very satisfying control mechanic that has you swiping to dash, swinging your sword to parry, and shooting your energy blaster. Simple looking. Yes, engaging. Absolutely. Your job is to climb a mysterious tower that descended your world eons ago, as you climb, die, repeat, you get stronger, building a perk tree that lets you last stronger and dive further. The game has everything, interesting lore, cool pixel-style graphics, epic combat, 
and even better boss fights, cool locations, and interesting lore. If you are still watching, it means I found a way to entertain you but sadly, we are done. Which roguelike are you man enough to try out? As usual, let me know down in the comment section and if you want more, like, subscribe, and please feel free to check out other videos if roguelikes aren't your thing.